Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. In today's video, we're going to be continuing High School DxD Fallen Hero. What if Issei was the Blue Beetle, Season 2, Part 2. Now, for today's video in particular, due to some inclement weather that will be coming in my area in just a few short hours, I've had to record this video a lot earlier than I intended to. Also, I'm not feeling too well at the moment, so this is going to be more of a summary heavy edition of the story. There's not going to be a whole lot of dialogue, a lot of back and forth. It's going to be one of those by the numbers sort of stories and anything that I don't cover in great detail today, I will um, come back and go over that when we do part three next week. But anyway, as we continue on with today's story, we follow with the start of season two with Issei and the others being confronted by Shiera and Irina and Zenobia. With now Issei and his friends, the two groups banding together in an attempt to destroy the Holy Swords. However, will they succeed when they uncover a much more dark and sinister plot to destroy their world. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Issei and the small joint group would continue their search for freed and potentially the other stolen holy swords. Their search would soon lead them to an abandoned warehouse where Issei and his team had once fought against the stray devil. It proved to be a place for results as Freed stood on top of the roof waiting for them. In his anger, Kiba would be the first one to charge with Issei following close behind. For Issei, even though he could only summon the Scarab's abilities in both of his arms, he could still effectively make any weapon he wanted to, within reason. He chose to make the twin bladed hands and would engage with Kiba in swordplay against Freed, who wielded not only the Holy Sword rapidly, but also using the power of the Philosopher's Stone of Merlin, being able to perform great powers of alchemy at will. The others would assist where they could, and they were actually able to get the better of free for a short period of time. That was until he would be given some much-needed instruction on how to bring out the true potential of his holy sword. And that was by none other than Valper Galilei, someone that Kiba was very familiar with. Valper had been one of the many priests who was behind the original holy sword project. However, when his power was deemed as blasphemous, his research and everything taken away. What appalled him the most was that the church still continued to use his findings. Everything he had built, they used it to craft the next generation of holy sword wielders, despite having ostracized him. For Issei, while he could never forgive him for what he had done, on one hand, he couldn't help but understand how he felt it was the same way with raven the same way with asia the people of the church they had a weird habit a habit of casting those who they felt went against their ideologies however they were not above using them for their own ends all the same though for Volper, he had made peace with that and he decided he would just join the side that was going to bring the most chaos to the world and for Freed, the more he began to imbue his own power into the blade, the more he received from it, 
to the point where his speed was more than able to match up against both Issei and Kiba. In the midst of the chaos, Valper and Freed would attempt to make their escape, the others ready to chase after them. However, Issei, Raven, and Konako would be stopped as Rias, along with Akino, as well as Subaki and Sona would arrive, wanting to get to the bottom of what was going on. With no choice, Issei would explain to them everything. Of course, Rias was worried about them, and she strongly didn't want them getting involved. However, Issei would point out that technically speaking, Raven was not a part of the House of Grimry, simply under their protection. And while she could strongly advise her, Raven was going to do what she felt was in her own best interest, and helping Kiba was that. And for Issei, he would remind Rias that he had promised that he would look after Raven by any means, meaning that even though he was a part of the House of Grimry, and while he technically would be going against what Rias had ordered, he still had to look after Raven, and he couldn't do that leaving her to fend for herself. Rias understood the predicament she was in, and knowing that Raven was going to continue to help, and knowing that she would want Kiba to have as much help as he could, she wouldn't try to pursue it any further, and Issei would be spared punishment, because out of all of those in her household, he was the one most suited to look after Raven, to make sure that she was safe. Konako, however, would have to return home. She wasn't going to allow any more than necessary to get involved in this situation. While Konako wanted to persist, she knew that she was getting off a lot more leniently than she had any right to. And she oddly felt comforted, knowing that at least Raven and Issei would be there to back up Kiba. She would turn to Issei, asking him to promise to help Kiba and to help bring him home. Issei would give a trademark smile and a thumbs up, assuring her that everything was going to be alright, and that soon enough, Kiba would be back safe and sound with the House of Grimry, just like before. With that, Rias, Akino, and Konako would retreat, leaving the others to continue on in their search. They would soon split up and move separately, hoping that they could cover more ground quicker, Unfortunately, Irina would be the one to come into contact with Freed, losing the battle and being severely damaged, but even worse, having her holy sword stolen from her. By the time the others had figured out what had happened, it was too late. Issei was the first one to find Irina and the others would follow quickly. Freed was waiting for him wanting to marvel in the handiwork of what he had done, but he hadn't gone far enough. Issei was more than ready to kill him, just as the others had set their sights. However, a new individual would make his presence known, the one that was responsible for all of this. The fallen angel, the governor general, Kokobil. As Kokobil looked down upon the group, he was impressed by the fact that so many potentially powerful individuals had made their way. The Red Dragon Empress, the wielder of the Sacred Scarab, the daughter of the Devil King, Sir Zex, of the House of Grimry, and the sister to the Devil King of the House of Seatree, among many others. Rias would ask what Kokobil's plans were, why he had come to this town, and why he was looking to cause trouble. Kokobil would make it all plain and simple. He wanted a war. A great battle. He had been denied for so long, and he thought that stealing the Holy Swords would be enough to cause the conflict. However, it seemed that the best that the church was willing to do was sending two Holy Sword users and the Red Dragon Empress herself, which 
was definitely tempting, but still not quite the satisfying retaliation he was looking for. And if they weren't going to give him what he wanted, then it seemed as though he was going to have to take things to the next level. They would ask what he meant by this, and Cokeville would explain that in just a short while, all of Kuo Town was going to be destroyed raised and left to nothing but ash and dust. He figured that would catch the attention, killing the sisters of two of the Devil Kings, as well as wiping out the Red Dragon Empress. If that couldn't get the attention of the other factions to start a war, then he wasn't sure what would. If they wanted to stop him, they would have their chance. With that, Cokeville and Freed would disappear, the preparations being made for the final confrontation. As for Rius and the others, they would follow behind just as quickly, as they knew this fight was going to be the fight of their lives. They would arrive to Kuo Academy, the House of Sea Tree, Sona, Tsubaki, and the others, would erect a barrier big enough to cover the entire area, hopefully to keep whatever happened contained as well as they could. In the meantime, Akino had already taken the liberties of calling Sir Zex, much to Rius's dismay, especially for Akino going behind her back. However, Akino would press the importance of the situation. This wasn't something that could merely be swept under the rug, and knowing how Rius was going to lament in calling her older brother, she decided to rip off the band-aid as it were. Of course, Irina would be taken in for medical treatment, and in the meantime, that would leave Zenovia and Shiera to assist them, to which they agreed. They would have but a short while until Sir Zex and his reinforcements would arrive. They either had to hold out till then, or miraculously come out with a victory. Other than that, all would be lost. Issei and the others would all rally together. Kiba shortly on his way. As the final battle, the battle for the soul of Kuo Academy, for the soul of their town, and potentially the world, that lied on the cuspids of war, loomed overhead. The combined group would have to go over their best strategy to take down Kokobil. The two strongest pieces on the board were Issei and Shiera. Of course, Shiera having the power of the boosted gear could amplify her strength. It was a double critical at the moment, so using the full gauntlet, she would be capable of boosting herself a great deal. However, much like Issei, she too had struggled with achieving her own balance breaker. However, she made up for it with her remarkable skills in other areas. On top of all of that, she also wielded a powerful sword of her own. Although not considered a holy sword, it was still a sword of immense and great power. The sword known as the Dragon Slayer, Ascalon. It was definitely one that could rival even the strongest of holy swords. As such, it was another tool to use in her arsenal. For Issei, with the power of the Scarab, he had the ability to adapt and battle against anything. Of course, Shiera had her own questions and inquiries. She was progressing to Balance Breaker just fine, but Issei still seemed to be stumbling a bit. All the same, there was no point in reminiscing about what they could or couldn't do now, because it's the fight had been brought to them. Kokobil sat on a throne that sat and hovered over top of the school while the final touches were put on the fused holy sword by Valper Galilei, who summoned it forth for freed Selzin to use at his leisure. The combination of four holy swords, the Sword of Mimicry, the Sword of Invisibility, 
the sword of speed and nightmare, the sword of illusion. All four put together into one, a strong amplification of power, on top of free being boosted by the power of the Philosopher's Stone. With that, they would engage in battle against Freed, as well as having to deal with Cerberus, the three-headed dog of the underworld, which had unlawfully been summoned into the human realm by Cocobiel. The group would have to deal against Cerberus while fighting against Freed at the same time. Asya would stay back using her ability of twilight healing to assist where she could. However, she would find herself in the crosshairs of the beast. Issei would move in to fend off against one of the heads of the monster. And out of nowhere, Kiba would come in to deal another deathly blow to the other head. Setting his sights on Freed, everyone would begin to attack him all at once. However, he still managed to fend and hold off against all of them with relative ease. It seemed like their situation was going to be dire as they weren't seeming to make a dent in his defenses. Help would come from an unlikely of source. When out of nowhere, the sound of an incantation could be heard. Raven recognized this usage of magic better than anyone, although she didn't know who else could be capable of wielding it. When she looked, everyone could see that a new fighter had arrived to the battlefield. Issei was definitely smitten to say the least. A sexy magic girl of sorts? She even sported a top hat. And her rack. Oh. Oh, the potential of that. Issei would be bonked on the head for being a horny baka as the girl would introduce herself. She was Zatanna. Future Earth Delegate in Training. And she had come to put a stop to Cocobiel and his schemes. Cocobiel looked down to the ground, impressed but still disappointed. They couldn't even bother to send Constantine himself. What's he doing, getting in a drunken stupor with the Zazel? Zatanna would shake her head. I'm sorry, it's my uncle's doing. He has a lot of bad habits. Oh, trust me, I'm aware of that. But still, to send his own niece, to not show up himself. Do they just enjoy having me toy around with children? Cocobiel was less than pleased at this outcome. What was it going to take to truly get the war that he desired? Did no one take him seriously? Did they not take his threat seriously? Well... Maybe he'd have to do more. Maybe destroy a whole country. Would that be enough? All the same, even with the arrival of this new fighter, Freed still held the advantage. Kiba found himself taking the worst of it, as no sword he summoned could be strong enough or powerful enough to deal any significant blow to the fused holy sword. Even Zenovia was incapable of adding much more to it, and Shiera had even reached the limit of her boosted gear's ability, and it had been forced to reset. All the same, Valper chose to add salt to the wound, explaining in the end how pointless Kiba's sacrifice was, the sacrifice of his comrades. You see, it took a powerful essence for those that couldn't wield a holy sword on their own. However, in most cases, humans didn't possess enough of this aura or essence required to wield a holy sword. As such, it was best to collect all of it, combine it together into a crystallized state, and then pass on that aura to others to help boost or improve their chances of wielding the holy sword. Kiba was the only exception the only one who could do so naturally without the need for the so-called blessing of the aura. Valper would even hold up the very last crystallized form of aura that they had. However, they had learned how to mass produce aura long ago without the need for human casualty. However, all the same, Kiba was filled with an immense sadness. 
Was the deaths of his comrades meant for nothing? Why was he the only one left to live? For what? What was his purpose? His friends? The people he considered family? They all had goals, dreams, the things that they believed in wholeheartedly. They thought what they were doing was for the grace and the love of God himself. And yet it seemed as though in the end their deaths meant absolutely nothing at all. So why did the one that have no dream, no ambition, no purpose, why was he allowed to live in this accursed world? As he held on to the chrysalis that had been thrown to the ground, his sadness becoming to the point of its own aura, he would find himself being surrounded by the spirits of those of whom he held dear. Scarab, Kajada, that relied on Issei's back, would explain to him the phenomena that was occurring. That right now, Kiba was achieving his own form of balance breaker. His strong emotion and will, mixed with the sadness of loss, was calling forth the new essence, merging together to draw out his true potential. And it came in the form of the Holy Devil Sword, a combination of holy and devil power. Two forces that could seemingly not coexist now merged into one. Zenovia would join by summoning Durandal, the blade that was capable of cutting through anything. Together, along with the others backing them up, they would make short work of Freed's fused holy sword. And, in one fell swoop, a combined strike from the Holy Devil Sword and from Durandal would cut through at the Philosopher's Stone embedded in Freed's chest, releasing the massive wave of energy and destroying it in the process. Valper couldn't believe it. How, how was this even possible? The very laws of nature could never allow it. It could never allow such a thing like the Holy Devil Sword to exist, not with the current powers that relied in play. The only way that this could exist would be if... And the moment he figured it out was the moment his life came to an end. Being stabbed with a blade of light through the back and falling to his knees in death, Kokobil couldn't let him get out the secret. Although, maybe that's just what they needed to hear. The others would persist asking what exactly he meant by this. His vague words as he tap danced around and alluded to this certain ideal, as if it were a hidden truth that they themselves couldn't see. It didn't matter. Their time was up as Cocobill rose from his seat. Whatever push they were going to make towards him, it had to happen now. Everyone would launch their attack against Cocobill. However, he was able to fend off against all of them. Shiera would use the boosted gear to once again raise her power to max as she swung with Ascalon, Kiba with the Holy Devil Sword, with Zenovia using Durandal, Issei using the Sword of the Scarab, all of them slashing and moving towards Kokobil as he fended off against multiple blades at once, creating swords of light in both of his hands. For young children, their fighting prowess was definitely ones to be marveled. I must admit, a few centuries, and you all might be able to truly give me the challenge I'm looking for. However, in the end, you are all insignificant. No, this isn't how it used to be. In my day, during the time of the last great war, everything was going so right and we were winning. But then Azazel pulled out like a coward. The fool promised there would never be another war. Right when we had the advantage. When the other sides had suffered their great losses. Everyone was tired of him jerking around the answer. What was this great loss? This unseen truth? What was he not telling them? They all demanded answers. Especially Zenobia. Kokobil simply grinned. At this point, maybe he truly was trying to start the war to end all wars. 
But deciding there was no point in holding back, he told the truth. In the last great war, God and the four devil kings were all killed. A stunned silence filled the battlefield as now that truth lied on everyone. That wasn't what they were told. They were told that in the last great war, the four devil kings and God worked together to seal away Trigon. And in doing so, it led to peace. However, Kokobil would wag his finger. That's not entirely true. Yes, Trigon was sealed away. His power was so great that death was almost an impossibility. The best they could do was hack him into pieces and seal him in truly the depths of the darkest of dimensions, a place where he could never reconstitute unless he were to break free. However, in doing so, it took all of their lives in the process. So you're saying that there is no God? Hmm. Michael has been keeping the system in place. So long as he is able to do so, things like prayers and exorcisms can still work to a certain extent, although not as potent as it truly used to be. With after the Great War, each side lost great force and number, so much so that they've now had to turn to humans to try and rebolster their ranks. But my problem is that the war came to an end far too soon. Just when things were starting to really get good, Azazel chose to pull out. Well now, I will look to finish what he could not. Everyone stood weary, waiting to see what was going to happen. Issei also standing firm. However, Kokobil wanted to try to coax him to his side. The promise of women, any that he could possibly desire and want. Of course, the idea of Issei getting his own harem, well, that was definitely a tempting offer. However, he would be chewed out by the scarab more than anyone else. Raven only shaking her head in disappointment. And you wonder why that thing doesn't respect you. Hey, it's not my fault, Issei would say. He said harem, the guy's not playing fair. Issei, Rias would yell out. Y yes, Rias? Focus. If you win this battle, when we get home, I will let you do Anything you want to me. It, anything? You you mean I could I could do more than grope. I could I could suck on them itty I could I can get my mouth on those titties. You can. It's a small price to pay if it means it saves our lives. Oh hell yeah! The scarab could feel his power starting to rise and emanate. The great power, the scarab itself. It could feel Issei's spirit starting to flow and rise to the max. Raven, Shiera, everyone else looked on as a new wellspring of power had finally emerged within Issei. As he summoned an energy cannon on his left arm. He raised it and pointed it directly at Kokobil, who matched with an energy blast of his own, only for it to be completely consumed as he was blasted out of the sky and came crashing to the ground. Are you serious? The blue beetle gained that much power just thinking about sucking on some breasts. <laughs> you may have big mistake, Kokobil. I am Issei Hiyoto. The inheritor of the scarab, the blue beetle. I have my own dreams and desires. I don't really care about war, being some prominent king or hero. No. Only thing I care about is getting into that president. I'm going to get with Rhys, and I'm going to get with her real hard. Are you serious? 
You're the worst. Oh, Issei. He is truly a motivated man. He can't be serious. Ah, oh, come on, Kaj. Why don't you just back me up this one time? You want to see what true determination and grit looks like, right? Well, now it's on full display. Lend me your power. And let's finish him once and for all. As Issei charged up another attack, suddenly the barrier would be broken as a new fighter would appear. You call them interesting? Then you truly have fallen. As Kokobil looked up at being in white with the sin, making short work of him, crushing and evaporating his power almost to the point of nothing, shrinking it in an instant, divine dividing. Shira was shocked to see who had emerged after making short work of Kokobil and leaving him incapacitated, the being set to leave. Are you really going to leave us, Albion? Yes. It is not often that those of the great powers often get to convene. If it isn't Kajada and Dreg, you are still alive. But of course, brother, we are destined to fight. And you, I have not seen you in almost a thousand years. So much time has passed. The last of the scarab, the only one that remains. I am the last that remains because I am the strongest. You would be wise to remember that. Indeed, we will meet soon enough. And with that, the mysterious white dragon emperor would fly away. Of course, the main focus was making sure that the school would be rebuilt in time. As now, everything seemingly could go back to normal. Although, in this world, normalcy is often a rarity. For Zenobia, she knew too much. The truth, everything. She knew she could not go back. However, Shiera, she could not be let go so easily. While Zenobia would be excommunicated, even though Shiera knew the truth, she could not. She was currently already an angel and already the Red Dragon Empress. If they were just to allow her to walk off into enemy territory, to allow them to gain both the Scarab and the Red Dragon, that would throw an imbalance in the current state of power. Irina was confused by it all and upset, However, Shiera would try to explain things. I am sorry that it had to come to this. No, no, Shiera, it's fine. Honestly, I don't know why I stayed so long myself. You could say this is my chance to start again. I do wish you all for the best. And I do hope that our paths will never cross. In combat, I feel the same. Zenobia would be made a knight and would be welcomed into the House of Grimory. However, before doing so, she felt the need to apologize to both Asia and for Raven. How she had acted and what she had said towards them was not justified. For Raven, she accepted the apology, although to be honest, she had reached a point where she truly didn't care. But for Asya, she was more than willing to forgive. Asya always having that sort of bubbly and happily made personality. And as for Kiba, he would be welcomed back into the House of Grimry as well. With Rias and everyone else just happy he was home. Although he would have to be punished for leaving, which came in the form of a hundred spankings. That did not go well for him at all. All the same, for Issei, it seemed as though the worst of things were finally over. 
Although there was that mystery girl that had joined them in the fight, there was definitely more to her than met the eye. He wondered if he'd ever run into her again. And what was a human delegate or earth delegate or whatever it was she had mentioned? All the same, it didn't matter. Right now, he had to go meet one of his clients, that rich dude that always wanted to hang out and stuff. When Issa arrived to his place, he was glad to see that he had made it there and hadn't canceled out on him. They played video games for a bit. And Issei had actually managed to get the upper hand, but eventually he lost. <laughs> Seems I'm not really any good. I wouldn't say that. I've just had a lot more time to train since you've been busy and all. Yeah, I want to apologize for that. A lot of stuff just came up and I had to take a rain check. Oh no, no, it's perfectly fine and understandable. After all, you've been through a great ordeal. Fighting for your life against Cocobeal and all that good stuff. What did you just say? <laughs> I know who you are, Issei Hiyoto. Or Blue Beetle, was it? Just, just who are you? The man with grin as ten black wings would appear on his back, five on each side, respectively. My name is Azazel, and I am the leader of the Fallen Angels. Nice to make your acquaintance, devil boy. This concludes, What If Issei Was the Blue Beetle? High School DxD Falling Hero Season 2, Part 2. As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned for Monday's video as we're going to be continuing Dragon Ball World Strongest. What if Wonder Woman was in Dragon Ball Part 15? And make sure you catch up on all of our other videos this week so that you can always stay up to date on any new stories that we have here on the channel. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.